All right, builder's log. Z-axis linear actuator. Oh boy, that sounds cool, right? So a Z-axis linear actuator is actually these things that go this up and down. And um, what we have is a little slide. Okay. And this slide, I have my bearings set up just like my X and my Y with the exception of another one. This one. And you can see this one only has them set up on the outside. These two, and you can see that there's a little T and a B. T, B, represent top and bottom. These two fit together to make the Z axis linear actuator. Which will probably get you beat up if you said that in a party and like, hey, I got a Z axis linear actuator at home. All right, so it works kind of like this. These are the, these are huge, three and a half inch, quarter twenties, right? And I have these on this side. These point down. These point up. Notice I also had these nuts in here. Okay, so they're on the inside. So when I go to sandwich these together, I had these in there. All right, so I'm going to sandwich these together. Notice also, sorry, uh, there is a small bolt right here. This can, makes it so the linear actuator doesn't go all the way down. All I did was drill out the pipe, stuck a quarter 20 this way, and that way it'll rest on that. All right, you'll see here in a second. All right, here we go. Now, when it first goes together, it's a complete nightmare. It's a pain beyond belief. So I'll try my best to get this together in front of you without losing my mind. Once you get a little bit, best to stick a bowl on it or a nut. Okay, so that's somewhat there. Now on this side, Putting those in the holes. Once you get a couple of these nuts on, it's not so bad. Then you can kind of just set it down. And you don't want to over tighten these because it will cause a lot of drag on it. But there is absolutely no play whatsoever going um, X on this. So when I do get it all tightened down, and you can't move this at all this way. But it's really easy to move it up and down. Very cool, right? <laughs> yeah. And then you can tighten these other bolts the other way. So these rest up against the glass, or plexiglass. And if it feels like it's sticking, you just gotta make sure that you have these tightened evenly and then all your bearings are kind of going around. Then, this fits in the front of it like that. And that is my Dremel. All right, so we're at this stage now where we can start lighting it up. But other than that, I have all my axes now working. So here's my Y. I just gotta mount the undercarriage where it has that screw. 
just like I did the X. But here's my X. How nicely that moves. Y and now Z. Alright, cool. We're ready to rock and roll. Just gotta mount some stepper motors up here for the Z axis. And we'll see how that goes. Enjoy. Another thing I wanted to point out in this builder's log was this. So if you have this slide that goes across, you don't want it to crash into the pole. Okay, that's one thing that's bad. You don't want that at all. There's been times when you're running a CNC and you accidentally screw up on maybe some of the G code and if that's the case it'll go crashing into something. Well, to prevent that from happening, I do put these stops in here. And again, that's made out of that epoxy plumber's putty. Okay, I got one on that side. So it will hit those first. And then this will go back and forth. So it makes sure that it doesn't hit the actual bearing. It has about a quarter of an inch between here and here based upon that stop. Also, to make things a little bit more stable, uh, down below, under here, you notice that screw that we made in there? I put plumber's putty in there also. So that way it expands around and is impossible to turn now. Because the uh, erector set type of steel that was on there, it was okay quality, but I wanted something a little bit stronger and that's definitely a lot stronger now. All right, so that's it for that. Just wanted to add that. I do have my Dremel now mounted to the top via pole. So, till next video.